When you are doing research, whether it's your master's, undergraduate, PhD, postgrad, or more, even postdocs are like this, there are ups and there are downs. And it is very unreasonable to expect your PhD to constantly, or any research for that matter, to constantly increase in how you feel about it. You know, oh, it's going great, it's always going great. Oh my God, I get there. It is a roller coaster of a experience. So it goes up and down and up and down. And sometimes in the lowest of the lows, you feel like giving up. And then all of a sudden there's a massive high and you just are addicted to like the research world where you're like, oh my God, I need to do more of this experiment. I can't believe it worked. Now, in my uh, PhD, I had a particularly great highlight where a solar cell worked. So we were working towards making solar cells from aqueous dispersions of um, conducting polymers. So it's like an ink I was creating. And we knew it kind of worked because there was a paper that had a solar cell that was like 0.0008% efficient, something like that. And this solar cell that I made in the second year of my PhD was an order, if not two orders of magnitude higher than that. And I was like, oh my God, it's it's working. My PhD isn't like a sad failure story. It's gonna work. And that was a really sort of high moment. And then, not long after that, was a very, very low moment. I gave a presentation and my supervisors really laid into me afterwards and it felt like I didn't know what I was doing, that everything I'd done was rubbish and it just really sort of uh, made me question what I was doing, whether it was the right choice to move to Australia to do this PhD and it was just so uh, soul destroying. In this video, what I want to share with you is all of the ways that you can overcome the ups and downs of research because it's inevitable you're going to go through them. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails, everything from the tools that I recommend and use, the podcast and the TEDx talk that I've been on and given and more. So go sign up, it's completely free, exclusive content only on that newsletter. Go check it out. The first thing that really helped me understand the magnitude of the downs was when I was reading something I can't even remember, but they were talking about about the biological ramifications of having a negative experience. Now, your body and your sort of evolved mind is all about protecting you. So it really doubles down on the stress signals it gives to your body biologically when something bad happens. Now, when I think about my PhD and my research, it is very easy for me to recall the bad moments, to remember the moments where I was stressed, I was panicked, I felt judged, or I felt like a failure, or I felt like something didn't go right. Like those are really crystal clear in my mind. And that's because when they happen, your body gives these biological signals, these stress hormones flood your body, and it just feels so massive. And it just sort of like burns itself into your memory. But I can assure you that there were loads of other really great experiences during my research, uh, PhD and postdocs, where I was, you know, very happy with the progress and I felt really good. And if I kind of delve a little bit inside, I can kind of remember them, but not nearly as clearly as the bad things. So understanding that really helped me realize that when I was reflecting, it was much easier for me to recall the bad stuff. And I'll talk about a way that I've kind of enabled to train my brain to think of the good stuff as well. Um, but it's, it's really the biological component which really plays against you. I often ask myself, will this matter in five years time? No matter what I'm going through, whether or not it's my like entrepreneurial life at the moment, or it was my PhD, it was something that really resonated with me, which was, will this matter in five years time? A lot of the biological stress that we go through, or a lot of the downs that we experience during research, PhDs or postdocs, are really like political things. It's really about a person not liking you, or an embarrassment in front of a group of people. But I 
often reflect and go, will this matter in five years time? In five years time, is this gonna be a defining moment of my career or my life? And to be honest with you, a lot of the time, like 99% of the time, it's absolutely not. No, this, I will not even remember this properly. It won't define my career or my PhD or my research. It's just an annoyance. But because your brain goes into panic mode, it immediately assumes this will be forever. It will never change and people will always feel this way uh, about you or your research or you will always feel this way about you. So don't worry. In five years time, a whole new set of other problems will, weather, will worry you, not the one you're, you're dealing with right now. The third thing I have found incredibly useful is gratitude, is taking a moment just to be like, I am thankful for this, I am thankful for this. And I actually produced a little pocket book which was based on Richard Wiseman's uh, 59 seconds, which was to feel better, um, in under 59 seconds, backed by science. So I produced a little pocket book. I'll put a link in the description so you can download it too. I created it using Pocket Mod and uh, with a pen each day, it just gives you a little challenge you can do in 59 seconds or less just to help reflect. And this is where I think religion has really sort of like nailed it because, you know, the end of the day prayers or something, or just being able to reflect, zoom out from your life and say, well, thank you for this component, my health. Thank you very much for my opportunities. Thank you very much for the house over my head. Thank you very, the roof over my head. Thank you very much for my friends. Thank you very much for me being able to pursue a career. Like all of those things really help. And I, I do it in a secular way. I'm not religious um, and, but, you know, just reflecting on your life, the good things can help burn those good things into your memory so they're much easier to recall, you feel much better, and these simple techniques can make you feel so much uh, less panicked when things go wrong because you'll have a bank of memories, you've reinforced that gratitude that just makes you feel better. So that's how I challenge the downtimes. The fourth thing that I think is really important, whether or not things are going really well or really poorly, is attributing that to external factors. It's always easy to blame someone else for issues. And don't get me wrong, sometimes the outside forces you cannot control. But by taking ownership of your current situation, I think it just helps me at least reset my brain and be like, okay, this is the bad thing, this is what I can do to get out of it, rather than waiting for an external thing to change. And also when things are going really, really well, it's very kind of, easy to go, well, it's only good because I've had this lucky thing. Yeah, maybe that's a little bit true, but you have put yourself in this position, you've done the research to get to a point where things are going well. And I think it's important to say, okay, I am responsible for that. I am responsible for um, getting the research to a point that I'm proud of. There is no doubt in my mind that the reason I feel so comfortable doing what I'm doing now, doing a PhD, entering the unknown, was because I had a very supportive network of people that I could talk to. I could be open and honest with what was going on, how I was feeling, and they would listen and not even give me advice, but just having someone you can talk to makes a huge difference in surviving the ups and downs of research. Now, if you don't have someone uh, that you, you trust sort of personally, you can seek professional help. Um, just speaking to someone who will listen, will understand, is so important to flattening in and out the ups and downs that you feel inside. If you keep them trapped, in your mind, they will feel bigger. It gets amplified. Your brain is like an amplification chamber for thoughts. But the moment you talk them aloud, you write them down, you see them, you know, you, you express them to someone else, they kind of lose a lot of power. And so it's really important to talk to someone, whether it's prefer professionally or personally, it doesn't really matter. But talking out loud, talking about your fears, going deep on your feelings really does help. And that is one way that I've been able to survive not only my PhD, but my postdocs, my career change, my entrepreneurial endeavors, and the future I know will be much sort of more uh, sustainable and much nicer because I have people to speak to. And uh, I highly recommend you open up to someone you trust too. 
So there we have it. That's how I survived the ups and downs of academic research and life in general. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That is my new project where I've got my ebook, the ultimate academic writing toolkit, and also my forum where we help each other become better academics. All right then, I shall see you in the next video.